Today, I will show you how to make your own bokashi. And if you are enrolled in my online course, be sure to log in there to watch this because there's way more information in the course. So your ingredients, we have our substrate, which could be sawdust or rice bran or some kind of finely chopped carbonaceous material. Per gallon of substrate, we will be using half a tablespoon of EM mother culture or activated EM, half a tablespoon of unsulfured blackstrap molasses, or if you don't have that, you could use a quarter tablespoon of sugar. And then we have one and a half cups of clean water. So the first thing to do is and that was per gallon of substrate. So if you're doing several gallons of substrate, you have to multiply that out. First thing is to mix together these wet ingredients. So this process is very similar to making activated EM. We're just using more water. We do want to heat up the water to the temperature of a hot bath around 100 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 38 to 48 degrees Celsius, I believe. And you wanna be able to put your finger in that. Then in there, you can dissolve your molasses, stir it thoroughly to make sure it dissolves nicely. The heat helps with that. Then you can add in any optional ingredients. If you're watching this in the course, I've already discussed that in another video. You don't have to use any other ingredients for a basic activation. And then you can add your EM, last. Mix that together thoroughly. Then we get to mix it with our dry ingredients. So any sort of container will do. Today I'll be showing you in a five gallon pail, but you can do it in a bigger barrel, a wheelbarrow, on a tarp, anything that allows you to mix a lot of wet and dry ingredients together. I actually find the pail a little bit challenging sometimes, like you only wanna fill a five gallon pail about halfway in order to allow yourself to be able to mix everything together well. And I use my hand to mix things. I'll fill my five gallon pail halfway, then I'll pour a little bit of my liquid EM molasses mixture in there. About a quarter of my mixture I'll pour in there and I'll start to stir it all around. Then I'll pour another quarter in there. Just gradually, I'm pouring it in. I'm trying to make sure, because I don't want the substrate to soak all of it up and then most of the substrate to be left dry. So that's why I like to add it in a little bit at a time. Occasionally, you may just need half of your liquid if your substrate was already a little bit moist for some reason, but usually using the whole amount of liquid is right. That's about 10 times as much substrate as water. Occasionally, you may need more. And actually today when I was making this, I ended up going and making the water mixture, water EM molasses mixture again and using that. So by that point, I was at just five times as much substrate as water. It really depends on the substrate. What you wanna do is when you're done mixing, you want to be able to pick up your substrate and clump it together and it should kind of stay together in a ball, but just barely. You certainly don't want it to be dripping wet and you want it to really crumble quite easily, but you want it just moist enough that it kind of stays together. I think it's about 30% moisture you're going for, perhaps a little less moist than a typical compost pile. Once we have mixed our bokashi, then we need to ferment it in a plastic bag of some kind that doesn't allow air into it. A fairly thick plastic. The nice thing about a bag is you can really squeeze the air out of that quite well. So a Ziploc bag has worked nicely for me, but you could also just use like a garbage bag, maybe that you've double or triple bagged, so you two or three bags to really make sure there's no air coming into there. That can work really well too. The original literature used to say just to ferment it for three or four days at room temperature and it would be done. More recently, I see more people suggesting longer fermentations like two to three to four weeks. I think two weeks is kind of a good happy medium at room temperature to just to make sure it's just like a lot of fermentations, it gets better with time. Some people will let it ferment for many months and I'm sure that doesn't hurt at all. But I think two weeks is a good amount. When the fermentation is done at room temperature or even warmer is better if you have a nice warm room, you can open the bokashi, have a look at it. You may see some white in there. You don't want to see like a gray or a green mold. That means something went wrong. Maybe it was too wet or there was too much air in there. You want to throw that out and clean the bucket well and start again. Usually it works out beautifully. I don't think I've ever had a problem with it. It would store for a long time, but what happens is 
you're going to start to use it. And that means you're going to be introducing air in there as you use it. And so really then it would only last a few weeks. But what you can do, and this is what is commonly done, is you dry it out and then it stores for potentially for a couple of years, certainly for many months. So what you do is spread it out on, I use a tarp, that just makes it easy, but it could be on any sort of a flat surface, a, a table or a floor. It'll get a little bit wet but not too wet. And just for my experience has been like two or three days at room temperature. You don't wanna put it out in the sun, but it could be in the shade outside or it can be inside. You dry it out, then you put it back into a dry bucket or into bags and then it stores for a long time. Do I have any here? Uh, yeah, like here's a Ziploc bag and it just stores for a long, 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 long time. That's all for fermenting and drying and storing your bokashi. And that is it. That's what we're going for. If you want to know how to use your bokashi once it's finished, I will put up another video right here showing you exactly how to do that. <laughs>